Our <clears throat> next speaker this morning is Lay Bell. Lay Newman Bell is a Farm to Community Fellow at Viva Farms in Skagit County. She is passionate about sustainable agriculture and the intersection of language and culture and, of course, food, which we will have at lunchtime. She's excited to share her work and story with you this morning. Please welcome Lay Bell. Good morning. So I want to start by sharing this image with you. Uh, these farmers are probably in their mid to late 80s, and while they're very adorable, they also, this image also illustrates a societal and agricultural crisis that we're facing today, and that is an entire generation of farm owners on the brink of retirement. So let's talk about some numbers. 57 is the average age of a farm owner in the United States today. And that statistic is also applicable to Skagit County. Of those, 80% are the owners of small to mid-sized farms. So we're not talking about huge commercial agriculture here. We're talking about small and family-owned farms. And probably most shockingly, in the next 20 years, 70% of these farmers are going to retire. If you look around in the audience today, you might be able to see this statistic reflected. You yourself may not be a farmer or have ever worked on a farm, but your parents maybe picked peas or strawberries if they grew up in Skagit Valley. And it's even more likely that your grandparents or your great-grandparents were involved in agriculture, like my great-grandparents who uh, managed an apple orchard in eastern Washington. So we know these farmers are going to retire, but clearly we're not going to retire from eating food. That's a diet that I don't want to go on, and I'm pretty sure you don't either. Which begs the question, in the future, who's going to grow our food? We know that it's not possible to import all our food from other countries. This is an environmentally and uh, economically unsustainable option. We also can't rely solely on the continued mechanization of agriculture to solve all our problems. What we need is real farm owners and operators. Otherwise, our pantries and refrigerators are going to look something like this. And I don't know about you, but I have no idea what that uh, black garbage bag is full of. OK. Um, so farming is not an easy job. Uh, some of you probably already know this. And if you're working outside doing physical labor, especially in a place where it rains like 300 days out of the year, it's definitely not easy. But there are also many other obstacles facing beginning farmers today. And that's why we see really tragic outcomes, like the people who grow our food not being able to afford it for themselves, farmers using food stamps. And in fact, uh, farm workers are some of the highest subscribers to supplementary nutritional assistance programs across the board, uh, or SNAP programs. I also recently learned that the average income for a farm worker in Washington state uh, with a family of four is just $17,400 a year. Imagine trying to feed four people on that kind of salary. The good news is uh, we have a community of people that are enthusiastic and interested in agriculture. In Washington state, uh, as of 2009, agricultural production brought in over $6 billion to our economy. And there were around 200,000 agricultural laborers that also worked in Washington state at that time. Many of these workers are seasonal workers who've invested the time and energy to farm with skill and efficiency. What they need is someone to invest in them so that they can move up to be managers and owners of their own farms. So I want to share another photo with you. And this is a photo of Salvador and Misael Morales. This is a duo of brothers who own their own mixed vegetable, organic farm just here in Skagit Valley. Salvador and Misael weren't always confident that they 
would be successful in an agricultural profession, even though both of them had over 20 years of experience working in agriculture. And that's where Viva Farms comes in. Viva Farms is a nonprofit farm incubator program. And what we do is work to address the barriers facing beginning farmers to farm ownership. One of the main barriers is access to land. So farmers aren't inheriting land like they used to, or they don't have the initial capital to buy or lease their own land. So we provide a 33-acre organic farm, which is divided into parcels, uh, where farmers can scale up as their business grows until they're eventually ready to spin off and purchase their own land off the incubator. The second thing we do is provide access to infrastructure and equipment. So if you're fortunate enough to be able to purchase your own land, uh, my guess is that not many of us would have an extra $30,000 lying around to buy a tractor. Um, I know personally I might be able to buy like a tractor tire <laughs> with the money I would have left over. So we provide this uh, infrastructure and equipment for rental. Another component of our program is working with WSU, or Washington State University Extension, to provide a comprehensive business education program for our farmers. In this course, they're able to develop and write an original business plan, but they're also able to work with their uh, course, the other course participants, to really build an invalu invaluable network, uh, sharing ideas, challenges, and success stories. The final component of our program is access to direct markets, and this is probably the most important component. So we run a, a farm stand off of Highway 20, and I was joking that a week ago it was like an hour from here because of the bridge traffic, but now we're back to 10 minutes from here. And we run a collaborative CSA program with over 1,000 subscribers as well as selling wholesale to uh, restaurants in Seattle and Bellingham. And this gives our farmers an opportunity to try selling to different markets without assuming an unmanageable amount of risk. So that is exactly what Salvador and Misael did. And going back to their story of success, they were able to work through this program and eventually spin off the incubator and purchase their own farm, which is where they probably are working right now. And while I don't believe that uh, anyone could replicate the specific charm or style of Salvador and Misael, they are not entirely unique in the fact that according to the 2002 agricultural census, immigrant farmers are the fastest rising demographic of farmers in the United States today. So my wish for us is not just to think about uh, nutrition and health when we think about food, but also to think about a sustainable living for farm workers so that they can provide for themselves and their families. I have a friend who uh, started eating organic produce when she was pregnant because it made her feel better, which is really awesome. Um, but if we took this a step further to think about the pregnant producer growing this food when we made our food choices, that would be even better. So now I'd like to take us back to the question I posed originally, who will grow our food in the future? And the answer is farmers like Salvador and Misael who are already growing our food. What we need is support for continued support an investment in beginning farmers so that they can continue to grow and become farm managers and farm owners, as well as continuing, continuing to uh, provide us with delicious food to fill our refrigerators and pantries. Thank you.